All right, anytime uh, the substances change phase, um, if it is a physical change, it isn't going to involve energy. And so a lot of times what we can talk, uh, a convenient way to talk about the energy changes uh, involved in physical changes for a substance is to look at what are known as heating curves and uh, cooling curves. Okay, so on the y-axis we can plot temperature of a substance and then uh, on the y-axis, excuse me, on the y-axis we plot temperature, on the x-axis we plot energy or heat added to a substance. And let's talk about um, water in this case. So this would be the heating or cooling curve for water. All right, and so let's start uh, this axis at say, let's say negative 10 degrees Celsius. And of course, water is a solid compound or solid molecule or in the solid phase at negative 10 degrees Celsius. And so as we increase the energy or heat, we would increase the temperature of water until it hit zero degrees Celsius. At that point in time, we've stopped raising the temperature of the solid water and what would happen is that we would need to continue to put in energy until we have melted all of the water. And so at that point, the solid water um, starts to melt into liquid water. And at that point in time, the temperature of the water doesn't increase. And so you see a characteristic plateau in heating curves when the substance is melting. All of that energy is going into converting solid phase water into liquid phase water. So initially at negative 10 degrees Celsius where the energy is going to uh, increasing the temperature of the solid water until it heats, hits the melting point at zero degrees Celsius. And then uh, additional energy goes into um, melting the substance going from a solid to a liquid. As soon as the entire sample is in, uh, in the liquid phase, the temperature of the liquid will start to go up again. And so we start to increase the temperature of the liquid water until we hit another phase change. And that of course would be the point in which we're going to start to boil water, which is at 100 degrees Celsius. At that point in time, we're going to hit another plateau where the uh, energy added is going to boiling um, the water. We're going from liquid to the gas phase of water. At 100 degrees Celsius. And this graph certainly isn't to scale. The energy it takes to go from liquid to gas phase is actually much, much more than it takes to go from the solid to liquid phase. So this line should be longer than this one, even probably by a larger margin than I've drawn. As soon as the sample of water is completely in the gas phase, uh, what happens is then, of course, we can start to increase the temperature of the gaseous water, or the water in the vapor phase. So any additional energy would uh, go to increasing the temperature of the water in the vapor phase. Okay. Uh, the amount of energy uh, it takes to increase the temperature in each of these phases is dictated by something called the specific heat, uh, which we will uh, start to use in calculations shortly. And then of course the amount of energy uh, it takes to melt and to boil are dictated by thermodynamic properties known as the heats of. So the melting point is called the heat of vaporization, or excuse me, heat of fusion. How much energy it takes to melt a substance is called the heat of fusion, and it is uh, abbreviated delta H, which 
change in enthalpy is really what it's called, but we call it heat of fusion uh, most of the time. And then the uh, energy it takes to boil the liquid is called the heat of vaporization. which is also abbreviated delta H, and most of the time you might see delta H sub V for heat of vaporization, or even VAP. And then of course, uh, heat of fusion is delta H F. Okay, so we're talking about adding energy to the substance to either increase the temperature, increase the kinetic energy of the substance, which is what temperature measures, um, or complete a phase change, either melting or uh, boiling. The uh, quote-unquote cooling curve would be the process, uh, the same process in reverse. So if we were going in this direction, how much energy um, is sort of absorbed or emitted by the system when it condenses from a gas phase, or, or the uh, temperature of the gas phase, uh, water starts to decrease. Okay, how much energy do you have to pull out of it? And then, of course, how much energy do you get out when steam condenses into a liquid would be in this direction. Um, decreasing the temperature of the liquid would be a uh, cooling curve. Freezing the liquid water would be a part of the cooling curve. And then decreasing the temperature of the solid phase would be what we uh, call the cooling curve. Okay, so those are all the, you know, the telltale um, areas of a heating curve. We talked about water in this instance, but of course um, there's heating and cooling curves for all substances. All right, so we talked about energy, but let's actually talk about units of energy uh, for these processes, okay? Um, most of the time in uh, physical sciences, like chemistry, you'll use the unit of joules, which we briefly talked about in um, nuclear chemistry. So a joule is a unit of energy Okay, and it is uh, one joule as uh, the units of one kilogram meter squared per second squared. And that's where the joule comes. Uh, another unit of energy uh, is the calorie. And that comes from actual physical measurements, one calorie is the energy needed to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. And so that's where that unit of energy comes from. And of course we can have a conversion between these two. It turns out that 4.18 joules is equal to one calorie. All right, so um, now that we know have a, a couple of different units we, um, for energy, we can actually calculate energy transfer or calculate uh, heat transfer, which is of course thermal energy. So calculating heat transfer, thermal energy. Okay. Um, heat is usually abbreviated with the lowercase q. And q can be measured by measuring the change in temperature of a substance. What I should say is can be calculated by measuring So heat can be calculated by measuring the temp of a substance, by the change in temp, okay? Uh, but it turns out that there's a couple other variables that are involved uh, in uh, calculating heat. One is mass, okay? 
All right, we can picture uh, two samples of water. All right. So one has, you know, 20 milliliters of water. And the other sample has 100 milliliters of water. Um, if we transfer the same amount of heat, let's say we, met, we transfer uh, 100 uh, calories of heat to both substances, the temperature change for both substances won't be the same. Obviously, it will take more energy to um, increase the temperature of 100 milliliters of water than 20 milliliters of water. You can think of this as going all the way straight to the boiling point. Uh, it would take longer to boil 100 milliliters of water than it would 20 milliliters of water, giving the same uh, amount of energy. And so what we need to do is we need to take into account the amount of material, and we do that by measuring the mass. Since the density of one of uh, water is 1 gram per milliliter, these are both 20 grams and 100 um, grams of water. The other scenario is that different substances uh, had a change in temperature um, by different amounts. So let's say we have a block of two different metals. Okay. Let's say we have aluminum and copper. Well, it turns out that again, if you add the same amount of energy to both substances, um, they will increase uh, temperature by different amounts. And that is because each of those uh, materials absorb heat uh, differently and transfer that to kinetic energy differently. And that um, value can be described as the specific heat. The specific heat of a substance determines how much uh, temperature change will occur given a certain amount of energy transfer. So times the specific heat, uh, also called the specific heat capacity. All right. And then, of course, we need to think about the change in temperature, and we that will give us uh, the final variable in calculating heat transfer, all right? So Q, heat, can be measured by multiplying the mass, which we abbreviate as M, times the specific heat capacity, which is abbreviated as C, sometimes C sub S, and then times change in temperature, which we uh, abbreviate as delta T, where delta T is always calculated by subtracting the initial temperature from the final. All right, so let's try out a problem um, involving calculating heat transfer. All right, so let's do this example. Let's calculate the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of 25 degrees or 25 grams of water to um, want from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. All right, our new handy dandy equation is Q equals M C delta T, mass of the object, specific heat, and then change in temperature. All right, so we've got the mass of the water, 25.0 grams. The specific heat of water, that's one thing, specific heat capacity, we would just uh, look that up, and it turns out that is 1.00 calories per gram degree Celsius. If you remember, or if you think about it, that's actually where the, the, the definition of the calorie came from. All right. So we've got uh, specific heat now, and that will be different for every substance, by the way. Just look that up. Calories per gram degrees Celsius. And then multiply that by the delta T. So let's calculate the delta T. Delta T is always the final minus the initial. And 100 
let's change that to 100.0 so that isn't ambiguous how many significant figures we have there minus 25 degrees Celsius and then um, well this is subtraction so I guess it didn't matter we've got 75 degrees Celsius that's our change in temperature and so we'll throw that into our calculation 75 degrees Celsius and if you look our units for this problem will turn out to be calories because of the grams canceling out as well as the degrees Celsius so 25 times 1 times 75 let's throw that into our calculator 25 times 1 times 75 that would give us 1875 calories and we'll cut this down to two significant figures and so that will be 1900 or 1.9 times 10 to the third calories all right so now we know how to use the uh, heat equation to calculate heat transfer q equals mc delta t specific heat that's specific to each individual substance um, delta T, you're always going to calculate as finest minus initial. And of course, if we were decreasing the temperature, if this temperature was, if this sample was losing heat, we would have got a negative number, and that would have been fine. That just tells you how much heat the system is losing, or how much heat the sample is losing in that scenario.